Hi there, it's Cora, and I'm coming to you from Yoga Bloom Live in San Francisco. I'm just offering a few short videos of a yoga home practice, between 10 and 20 minutes, just to have um, something to share with you all out on the interwebs, and just to share some of my space and my practice with you. So today, we're going to do a few standing poses a short sequence that you could tie into a vinyasa practice. Moving through, um, I think we'll probably get through two standing pose sequences. So, just to get present, let's sit for a few moments together. So just come into a comfortable position. We'll just sit for a few moments. So just get into a comfortable position. We'll just sit for a few moments. So, remember, the first step is to get the alignment of your body just right. And then settle into it and begin to relax deeply, consciously. Just take a moment and let yourself settle down. Find your breath. Climb inside your own breath. And then relax. Let yourself settle down. And then open your eyes or not, just come on back. And then we'll start. So, I'm going to come over here. I brought two blocks with me in case you, know, you might. I'll demonstrate with blocks and without. Just four poses. So, I'm going to come into the middle of my mat. So I'll stand with my feet about hip width apart, just coming into Tadasana, 
mountain pose. Just feeling mountain pose. You can shift forward, backward, side to side. Just feeling the sensation of equanimity, upeksha, here in Tadasana, mountain pose. Just finding this place of stira sukhamasana, ease and stability. Don't ever think that you're wasting time in Tadasana. It's a great place to practice, finding that ease and stability. So, taking your hands, interlace the fingers, turn them inside out. Coming up into Bhadaguyanasana, just begin to press the arms straight up. So, I'm just going to move back so you can see me. So, begin to press the arms straight up, turning the palm side, the thumb side, up as much as possible. And now keep lifting up so that you're lifting up so that the heels are all the way up. And now keeping the heels lifted up, I'm just going to turn to the side so you can see. Keeping the heels lifted up. Unless you have a knee issue, you're going to keep the, knee, the heels lifted up and begin to bend your knees and begin to come down. Now press your arms up as though the side walls could lift up. Keep pressing up and then slowly begin to come down with the heels lifted up until you're sitting on your heels. And then again, keeping the heels lifted, begin to press up and then turn toward one side, come back to center, and then turn toward the other side and come back to center without dropping the heels, without shooting up like a rocket, using the abdominals, begin to slowly begin to press yourself up, keeping the heels lifted. Press all the way up, 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 up on your tippy toes, and then release. Then taking a moment in Tadasana, just bring your thumbs into the hinge of your hips as though you're just taking them into the hinge of your hips. Press them in as though you're bringing the hips together. Press them in and begin to exhale and come on down into Uttanasana standing forward fold. So you'll be coming into Uttanasana standing forward fold. Interlace the elbows. And just come down as though you're coming into a dangling forward fold. If it's too much for your hamstrings, feel free to bend your knees since it's early on in the practice. And just notice the tendency in Uttanasana, standing forward fold, the tendency is to rock back. You see how my bum is behind the heels? That's a lot of pressure on my knees. So I need to bring the bum forward. So we're moving forward and putting the weight directly into the middle of the foot rather than into the heel and just dangle. So the legs are strong like a mountain and the torso is just dripping down like a waterfall, liquid, fluid spine. Now bend your knees until your chest and thighs meet one another. Release your arms. Interlace the fingers. Now whatever you just did, switch the hand so that you're interlacing the other fingers. Begin to roll the shoulders back as you inhale. And as you exhale, take the arms up and over. Inhale. Roll those shoulders back. And as you exhale, take them up and over. One more time. Inhale and exhale. Then releasing your hands, just begin to bend your knees and come down into Malasana, squatting pose. Notice the tendency is to collapse down. See if you can lift up, lengthen the spine down. 
Then releasing your hands, bringing your knees down, and just coming into Vajrasana for a moment. In Vajrasana, you'll take your right hand behind you, roll that shoulder, then take your left hand, hold on to the wrist of the right hand, take the right hand over, interlace the hands, roll both shoulders back, and then squeeze the elbows together and back. Try not to lift the ribs too much. Inhale, roll those shoulders back, and as you exhale, squeeze the elbows together and back. One more time. Inhale, exhale, and then release. Taking your left hand now, take it back, hold on to the wrist, take the wrist back, interlace the fingers, roll the shoulders back, and now exhale and squeeze the elbows together and back. Inhale, roll those shoulders back, and exhale, squeeze. One more time. Inhale and exhale, and then release. Coming back to the center, just take a moment, feeling the shoulders, roll the shoulders back. Then coming into cat-cow position, just taking a moment in cat, coming into a neutral spine. Now take an inhalation in, and as you exhale, just pull your belly, pull your pelly, belly, pull the navel in, and come into a rounded back like a Halloween cat. Just stay here for a moment, really rounding your back, tucking your tail, bringing your chin in. And on the next inhalation, as you exhale, just really round up. And now, inhale, go the other direction, coming into a little back bend position. Really stick your bum out, lift your chin, notice the stretch in your belly. Just stay here for a moment, really arching the back, feeling this nice opening in the back. Take another inhalation, really stretch, and then exhale, coming back to the rounded back Halloween cat. Inhale. A little back arch and exhale. One more time. Inhale and exhale. And then coming back to neutral. Taking a moment, just feeling your body again, just softening in the mind, softening the heart, softening the brain. Then take an inhalation in, and as you exhale, Bring the belly in, draw the belly in, tuck your toes, lift the knees a few inches off the ground and stay. Breathe. Keeping the belly going, lift, 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 lift. Only at the last minute do you bring your bum back, coming into downward facing. Since it's the first downward facing of this session, just take a moment in downward facing. Bend one leg, straighten the other, bend the opposite leg. Straighten the other, and then just bicycling the legs back and forth. Until you're ready to descend both heels toward the ground. So you can stay here a moment. Then come way up on your toes, draw the belly in, and take a big step with your right foot, bringing the left heel toward the ground. And now, Begin to straighten your leg, the front leg, and inhale, come on up. If you need to change your stance, which means that you might need to take the back foot over or the front foot over, you don't need to be in line. But whatever allows you to actually begin to move the pelvis. Now, instead of trying to get this back hip to come forward, it doesn't want to cooperate, it kind of does this. So instead of trying to Press this hip forward. Instead, bring your attention to the front leg and imagine that you could pull this front leg into the body. As though this front leg could come into the body more. And as you pull this leg into the body, lift 
the ribs. Inhale, and as you exhale, pull this leg in as you descend and bend. So you're actually bringing the leg bone, the right leg bone, the femur, into the socket as you descend and bend. In this position, the left shoulder wants to be back, the right shoulder comes forward. So bring the left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. And then when you're ready, take your arms up. Coming into warrior one. Staying a few moments in warrior one, attending to the back leg, attending to the lift, descend, and then placing your hands by your front foot. You can step the back leg in or not. You can step the back leg in and slowly begin to come into Parsvottanasana, side Uttanasana, intense side stretch, pyramid pose. Coming on your hands, you can also use blocks here. You can come onto the blocks to have more room. Again, you're drawing this front leg in. If you place the blocks at a higher position, it allows me to have more room in the pelvis, to draw this pelvis in, draw the front leg. Now, you're going to shift your position, coming into a standing split. You'll shift forward, bending the front leg and lifting the back leg. Now, I'd like you to keep the chest still on the thigh and lift the leg as much as possible. Lift up. Now, only when you have as much lift as possible, then begin to straighten your standing leg, coming into Urva Mukha Ekapadasana. Standing split. Lift the leg. And now, take the leg back down. Coming into Uttanasana. Taking a moment here in standing forward fold. You're going to be moving now, taking the other leg backward. So the right leg was forward. You'll now take the right leg back. You'll bend the leg and lift the leg as much as possible. Lift the leg, lift the leg. When you cannot lift anymore, begin to straighten that front leg, standing leg coming into Urva Mukha Ikaparasana, standing split on the other side. Lift the leg. Then coming back, into Parsvottanasana. You can use the blocks, getting again the length, drawing this front foot, front leg in to the socket. Of course, you can come into the full pose if you want to, but I'm more looking for action in the hip joint than just the hamstring. And from here, you can wriggle your foot back if you want to. And again, you're going to come up with straight legs, strong middle straight legs. Drawing this front leg in. Keep drawing the front leg in. And as you draw this front leg in, begin to descend the knee down. The energy is in this back leg, outer edge of the back leg. Keep drawing the front femur in. The more it comes in, the more the hip can turn. Keep drawing the belly in, ribs in. And when you have your full alignment, taking your arms up, coming into Virabhadrasana 1. Not so much looking for the square, but looking for drawing this bone in, in. As it comes in, my pelvis turns. Lifting up as I sit down. And then taking the hands down, placing them 
where I need to for downward facing. You're going to use your abdominals, lift, and step back to dog. Coming back to Adho Mukha Swadhasana, downward facing. So instead of Chaturanga here, I'm going to do another sequence. You're going to wriggle your feet back a few inches, come way up on your toes, draw the belly in, draw the belly in, keep on drawing the belly in until you come into Cobra, Ujjangasana. Once you're there, bend the elbows, shrug the shoulders, hug the elbows in, chin down, strengthen the, the back, press the feet into the ground, lift the chest, pick up your hands, place them back down, shrug your shoulders, hug your elbows, chin down, strengthen the back, lift up. Now, lift your legs. Now, lift up, then tucking your toes, Come back to downward facing. And just take a moment here. You can weigh up on your toes, draw the belly in, and then using the abdominals instead of the legs, light as a feather, begin to hop forward into Uttanasana. And again, noticing the tendency to shift back, bring your bum forward. And then you can either bend your knees and roll on up, or you can do a more classic inhale. Come on up and exhale. Hands to Namaste prayer. So I just wanted to share a few moments of a standing pose practice with you. I'll add some more standing poses in the weeks to come, and hopefully you'll come back and see us at Yoga Home Practice, live from Yoga Room.